Wow, I feel like it's been just a minute since I've sat down and filmed like a book review sit down style video. But hi, my name is Kayla. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I like to do book reviews, reading vlogs, stuff like that, kind of all over the place. But if any of that interests you, then definitely subscribe. And today I'm going to be talking about the book The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I know this is definitely kind of like an older, not old, but it's not a new release or anything like that, but I saw it at a bookstore when I was in Minneapolis and it was like a used copy and a good price and I definitely wanted something interesting and new to read and I remembered this and remembered that a lot of people liked it, so I picked it up and definitely it did not disappoint. I think it did exactly what I needed it to do and I'll get into it obviously a little bit more. The format of this is I'm gonna provide a a little bit of a summary synopsis and then I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the review some of my thoughts on like the characters story pacing all of that so I will leave a timestamp below if you just want to skip right ahead to the review but let's just get into it the girl on the train by Paula Hopkins is a story that follows a woman named Rachel who rides the same train the same like commuter train into London and back every single day and as she rides she kind of looks out the window she's definitely like her own life has fallen apart a little bit but she really loves watching people out the window as she rides the train and as she does ride she looks out the window at the same house every day and watches this couple the seemingly perfect couple named Scott and Megan of course in her head she doesn't know their names yet so she like invents kind of all of these things about her life you know how sometimes you do when you're people watching you kind of like just automatically come up with these backstories so she does a little bit of that on the train and to a certain extent it seems normal until you realize that it's maybe a little bit compulsive a little bit obsessive and as the story goes on obviously she starts to insert herself into their lives but one morning Rachel sees Megan with another man and then later learns that Megan is missing and is obviously pretty distraught about this because that's pretty crazy that she would go missing right after she saw her like with another man in an attempt to share what she believes is valuable information for Megan being missing and I mean as well as to kind of make herself feel better to feel like she has something to do since she recently also lost her job. She goes to the police and tells them about what she saw. They kind of think that she's obviously a pretty unreliable witness because she is a little bit like creepy for watching them I guess but also that she's like has a drinking problem and has recently lost her job. So because of those things they really don't take her all that seriously. So then she goes to Scott, who's Megan's husband, and poses as a friend of Megan's from the art gallery where she used to work. When she poses as a friend of Megan's, she gets this information to Scott and then also obviously starts to find out more information just about the lives of these people who she has watched so intently from afar and really, as I said, begins to insert herself into the lives and figure out a lot more through this, like through pretending to be a friend of Megan's and getting close to Scott and all of this, she sort of begins her own type of investigation as to what happened to Megan and who is to blame. So obviously a lot more information comes out as she's like investigating and everything, but it's definitely just a really compelling story as she gets close to like I said the husband of this missing woman and then they also happen to live down the street from her ex-husband and his new wife so there's kind of a couple little layers to this with her like obsession of that area but yeah I think I'm just gonna leave my summary there and not touch on the ending although it was so good um and also kind of weird but like good it hit it hit some of the spots it needed to hit but anyway i think i'm just gonna go right into my review and some of my thoughts on the book i do want to start the review by saying that just overall if you want my opinion i enjoyed reading this book i found reading it an enjoyable experience it kept me interested the story was always moving and it had shifting points of view which i always find is kind of nice in these thriller mystery type books because it just really keeps things moving and gives obviously different perspectives um i'll 
I'll get more into specifics regarding some of the story and characters, but overall, I enjoyed it. I would recommend it if you're a fan of the genre, and honestly, I'd probably recommend it even if you're not like a huge fan of the genre because it does encapsulate it pretty well. It definitely has some trigger warnings. There is infertility, infant loss, so there's a lot of definitely like triggering things that it deals with. Some of them in detail, some of them less detailed, but I do want to throw that out there, so maybe not a great read if you're like recently postpartum and you have a new baby. You'll probably find this disturbing, or obviously maybe if you're trying to get pregnant. I know that if this were something that I read like right after having my daughter, I probably would have been super upset. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that warning out there because I do feel like it's necessary, but I just want to get into the review a little bit more, kind of talk about the characters. Our protagonist for this story is Rachel, who um, divorced her husband a few years ago after learning that he was having an affair. She has developed really quite a drinking problem, which fuels a lot of the situations in the book. Like I said, she's hanging around often the neighborhood where her ex-husband lives, but she developed her drinking problem actually before, their, before the end of their marriage, before the affair. So this has kind of been an ongoing thing. I kind of like some of these aspects to her. I enjoy an imperfect perfect protagonist and honestly sometimes I was so frustrated and so I was just cringing at her behavior but I think that overall this makes the story more interesting and it makes the character definitely more nuanced to read because you're not like just reading this perfect person uh, yeah perfect protagonists to me are kind of boring kind of eye-rolling I can still root for an imperfect person or I can still be invested in an imperfect person's story I think that sometimes there's this myth that we need like this really really likable protagonist but I don't think that's true. Rachel as a character was kind of not that likable. She had a lot of problems going on in her life but like I was still very interested in her story. I don't know that's just something that I really like about this character and characters like this in general like they just don't have to be perfect for me to be invested in them. Other prominent characters are her ex-husband Tom and his new wife Anna with whom she cheated on Rachel so this was the woman with whom he had an affair and then they actually got married. They live in Rachel and Tom's old house together, which is a trip and actually also have a daughter. So this is another layer to the story, which is that Rachel really developed her drinking problem when she learned that she was infertile and she really wanted to have children. Her husband cheated on her with Anna and got her pregnant. So I mean, honestly, that would drive a lot of people to have a lot of insecurities and issues and probably use bad coping mechanisms but yeah anyway so his new wife Rachel also gets point of view chapters they are much less frequent than Rachel's but definitely do think that it's nice that there are other point of view chapters and Rachel still like I said frequents their old neighborhood especially when she's really really drunk and so these are actually people who she still sees with some regularity even though it's really bizarre but like I said she frequents their neighborhood like completely blacked out and this is also sort of part of why she's been watching and so invested in Megan and Scott you can kind of see the dynamic of why she would pin her hopes to this couple from afar and they seem so perfect but obviously a lot more is revealed as the story's going on I like how Megan is also given a little bit of complexity even though she is not necessarily like she's a missing person for the story but she does have a few point of view chapters which I really really appreciate and she's given a little bit more complexity than just like a victim who has no point of view and is never discussed with any nuance so I really really enjoyed that it's not only good for propelling the story and the storyline forward it's also really nice just that there's a humanization of the victim a focus on the victim in this story so I really like that for a lot of these kind of mysteries like I said she has a few point of view chapters as well so she's really given like you really are like oh, okay this is a person this this isn't just a plot device. This isn't just someone that something happens to. This is a person. Scott, her husband, is also characterized in a really interesting way and made to look like a bit more suspicious, which is so obviously stere stereotypical. The husband, the boyfriend, whatever. Um, and especially through his complex mourning and he's like a very jealous person. So it's really easy to look at him suspiciously for a lot of the book because he acts suspiciously. I appreciate reading like 
like a nuanced character like Scott where you're kind of like why are you acting like this I wish you wouldn't this is so annoying but also it's interesting and also I'm still kind of like feeling I can still feel empathy sympathy for you as a character in this situation even though you're frustrating me like your actions are frustrating me I appreciate when characters are a little bit more flawed I think it makes them feel a little bit more real and like I said it brings some nuance to the story and the characters and um kind of going on to the writing I think that the writing was actually very very descriptive I really thought that the style of this book was good for helping me get lost and swept up in the story a little bit honestly though it was a little bit unbelievable that Rachel would really be able to get that involved in like an active ongoing case without more repercussions um and that so that kind of bothered me but at the same time I think that there were a lot of ways in which the story felt more real because of characters and stuff so I don't know I kind of have mixed feelings about that the descriptions though the descriptions were really really good absolutely transported me into every scene into the setting I really felt like a lot of the scenes I was there and just really immersed in the story and so I really enjoyed that I enjoyed this book as like a little bit of escapism and I thought that yeah it was just a well-told mystery thriller. The pacing of the story was definitely really steady as well. There were a lot of different leads as to what could have possibly happened and we sort of get to explore these through Rachel's little investigation. I shouldn't like say that. She does a lot of work, a, a lot of like work, but through her investigation we kind of explore a lot of these different leads. The addition of a few other point of view chapters, like I said, with Megan and Anna also helped to kind of break up Rachel's viewpoint and help make sure that the story didn't feel super stale. Because I think that if it were Rachel's point of view every single chapter, it probably would have started to feel a little bit stale. And so I really liked that there were a few other point of view chapters, even though she's clearly meant to be the protagonist. As I mentioned though, there is some unbelievability to the extent to which Rachel got involved with those close to this investigation. I mean, I think that it was just a little bit unbelievable that she wouldn't have seen more repercussions or blowback because of this. Overall, the story was compelling enough that it didn't really break it for me. So I could kind of accept it and go with it. But I will say that that did at some points at some points I was just a little bit like, no way, like, no way would the police not like, I don't know, no way would they not, she, would she not like get in trouble for interfering with this, but I don't know, at the same time, it's fine. Yeah, I think overall I enjoyed it, I would recommend it as a mystery thriller, I think especially the last third of the book feels pretty thrilling, and like I said with Rachel having like a drinking problem there are then also the added blackouts that are another element of her like not totally remembering things correctly and having missing gaps in her memory so I feel like all of that kind of swirled up and playing together made for a really interesting read I just thought it was good I thought it was interesting and yeah I would definitely recommend it if you're already a fan of the genre I don't think I have a lot more to say on this book in particular I probably give it like four Four out of five stars. I'm not sure I would slap it with like an I absolutely loved it like five out of five but it was really really good so maybe if I sit on it even longer I'll up it or downgrade it but to me it feels like it's correct to be sitting there. But like I said great descriptions, interesting story, um, good pacing, some unbelievability but that's okay in a book like this I'm fine with that. Anyway, that's going to be it for this review. Please like, please subscribe if you're interested in more things like this. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you later.